Hello, still reading from Father of Faith in the Footsteps of Abram. And we're up to step four, child of the flesh. It is quite understandable that Abram seemed to appear a little frustrated, for God had told him where he would end up, but hadn't explained how he would get there. And this is taken from Genesis 15, verse 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed. And lo, one is born in my house. Sorry. And Abram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And Abram believed in the Lord, and God counted it to him for righteousness. At last, some clear inclination of what was going to happen. But the problem was that Abram had been 75 years old when he left Haran and Sarai 65. Time was marching on, and after 10 years of trusting God to keep his promises, nothing had yet materialised. It was now too late for Sarai to bear children, and this must have been a terrible situation for her to face. She had hoped with all her heart that she could give him an heir, but now had to accept that she was out of the equation. God's latest statement to Abram was that he would have an heir, but there was no mention of her. God had said it would come forth out of Abram's own bowels. I can't imagine how Sarai must have felt when Abram shared his latest communication he'd had with God. She must have been completely crushed and heartbroken to know that she had been pushed to one side, totally inadequate to meet her husband's needs. What was the point of being blessed with all her natural assets if she was just shriveled up and dry tree who could bear no fruit? I'm certain she must have shed buckets of tears pleading with the God of her husband to open her womb. But now she knew what his answer was, a definite no. What a beautiful woman Sarah was. I'm not talking about her outward appearance now. I mean, what a beautiful woman inside she was. She pushed her pain to one side and concentrated on how she could bring her husband's heart's desire to fruition. All right, she'd been denied this wonderful privilege, but she had a handmaid who could become a surrogate mother for him. She must have hated the idea of her husband becoming intimate and planting his seed into the womb of another woman, but her love for him drove her to ignore her jealousy to enable him to obtain his dream. Genesis 16, verses 1 to 4. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bear him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. It really upsets and pains me to hear people say that Sarai was impatient or lacked faith. People who speak in this manner lack both feeling and understanding. Maybe they've never loved with such passion as she did so couldn't imagine the trauma going on in her heart. Her love for Abram 
would want to keep her for him for herself. But her faith in the promises God had spoken to him made a sacrifice because she felt she was the one to blame. She was running a terrible risk. What if Abram enjoyed being intimate with another woman? What would she do if her offer became a regular practice and her handmaid ended up as wife number two? Her head her, and heart must have been in turmoil. I would, not have, I would not like to have been in her situation. How many times have you done things with the most unselfish of motives only to have it backfire on you? Well, if you're a true Christian, you must have experienced this countless of times. I know I have. I remember a particular incident where God provided me with an opportunity to bless my family and show them that I had changed and was trying to make up to them for all the problems we had encountered during our childhood. If my plan had been allowed to come to fruition, I know they would have been delighted. But unfortunately, one of my sisters would not believe that my motives were pure and did her best to slander me. She convinced my siblings I had evil intentions and was so plausible in her arguments that they believed her. It all went horribly wrong and they hated me. Poor Sarai, as soon as Hagar found out that she was pregnant, she began to despise Sarai. She might not have been as beautiful as her mistress, but she was certainly of more use and made sure she rubbed her fruitfulness into Sarah's face. What profit are good looks if your womb cannot reproduce? The handmaid now had the upper hand. She had been intimate with her mistress's husband and was now bearing his child. Who held the power now? Sarai could no do nothing about this situation. She had instigated it. Now she had to bear the consequences. She had done it with a pure motive, but Hagar was not of the same spirit, being an Egyptian, and did not know Abram's God. She had been brought up with different standards and would most probably have served Egyptian gods. Genesis 16, verse 15. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called his name Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. After all these years, when Abram was eighty-six years old, Ishmael, the precious son they had all been waiting for, who had been personally named by God Almighty, the heir of all the promises of God, was finally born. There was much rejoicing in the camp, for all had been fulfilled, apparently. <laughs>